The first key to a session is how you're going to track the session. In PHP, there are a couple of different ways to do this. Both of these methods use cookies, but one is automated, and one involves more work and understanding of MySQL. PHP has a set of built-in functions for managing sessions. It will automatically handle the setting of a cookie to track the user, and automatically manage the session variables, or the data that you are saving specific to the user. All you need to know about sessions using the PHP session managing functions is the information you want tracked. Pretty easy, but also pretty restrictive. If you're talking one website on one server with one PHP configuration setting, then you do have more control within the php.conf file. But chances are that you're at the mercy of your host provider, and as such, you want to be able to manage sessions in your own way. Either way, the first step is to get the user tagged with a cookie that will be used to identify them. If you're going to use the PHP session management functions, then you do this simply with the function session start. This must be placed in your script to execute before any data is printed or echoed to the screen, or it'll generate an error. This function will attempt to set a cookie in the user's browser to track their session. Note that there is always a chance that a user does not accept cookies, and thus, session tracking with this method will not be possible. I'm not going to get into the pros and cons of session tracking with cookies, but as it is an accepted method, just understand that if you depend on sessions for a website to function, such as a shopping cart, then there will be a number of people that cannot use the website. That's just the way it is. You should always include privacy information on your website about what data you collect, why, and how you use it in order to soothe your customer's mind about you using cookies in sessions. If you do not want to use PHP's set of functions to track sessions, and I recommend that you do not, then you need to manually find a unique ID for the cookie and manually set the cookie. That is done with the setCookie function. This also needs to be placed in your script before any data is printed or echoed to the screen. This has to do with HTML headers and how cookies are set and managed. The syntax for the setCookie function is set cookie, cookie name, cookie value or ID, how long it's going to be till it expires, the path the cookie can be called within, the domain it's called within, and whether the cookie can be called only secure or also insecurely. The cookie name part is the name that you will reference your cookie with. Name it something relevant to your website and to what it is saving. The value is the unique ID of the cookie. Using this method of session tracking, we're going to save the data in a database, so this needs only to be a unique identifier that will reference the database record for the session. A useful bit of code to generate the unique ID is here. This will give you a very unique ID that you can use to reference your session with. What it's doing is taking the micro time value, which is the time to milliseconds from when this function was called, splitting it into milliseconds and seconds, and then combining the two of them together to make one unique number. The third value is the expire value. Now this is the time that the cookie will expire in Unix timestamp format. The best way to use this is with the time function plus the number of seconds to expiry. For example, time plus 86,400 seconds is 24 hours. Your calculation of course being 60 seconds in a minute times 60 minutes in an hour times 24 hours is 86,400. The path argument is any specific paths that you want to restrict the cookie to. If you do not set anything here then you will only be able to retrieve the cookie in that directory and any subdirectories inside it. Typically you'll leave this simply as a forward slash. The domain argument is the domain that the cookie is available for. You can only access a cookie in the domain that it is set for. For example, you cannot get cookie information from a cookie set on Amazon.com and they cannot get it from a cookie set on your domain. Finally, the secure argument is either a 1 or a 0. 1 if the cookie can be retrieved only over a secure connection and 0 if it's available in both HTTP and HTTPS connections. So put that all together and we have our unique ID, setting a cookie, this is our cookie name, this is our unique ID that we generated, 
going to set it for 24 hour expiry. Available in all directories for this domain, securely and insecurely. If the user is accepting cookies, this will set a cookie named RWPHP with a unique value for the website www.realworldphpprogramming-thebasics.com that will expire 24 hours from the time it is set. In the next movie, I'll go over how to use the session register function to track session information when using the PHP built-in session manager.